Well, it's still plus politics. And on this segment, we're going to be looking at the president extending the tenor of the IGP, Mohamed Adamu. Now, we went to the streets to find out from people what they thought about this. I think his decision as a president, he best to know what is good for the country, even though sometimes his decisions does not favor us, the citizens. I believe uh, the executive, which he is one of them, I think he, they know why they approve or the president came out to declare such. So I think it's best not to him. Yeah, I feel it is calm because how would you say you, 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 you prolonged the tenure of the IGP? Whereas the record is there. You know when they get, this guy started working, and you know when he's going to retire. You ha the, the data is clear. You have it in your record. Then are you now saying you don't have a succession plan? Yeah, well, I think uh, he has done his best. Um, it's, uh, I think it's the right time for him to for him to give someone else a chance so that uh, we, we make a fresh start because uh, especially this, uh, this issue of this um, NSAS and so on, it's just good to start with someone else. The IG tenor has, has expired eh? and the, uh, the presidential still believe he has what it takes to continue he should live in. Eh? Because let me, to me, the way Amana the man, the man handled the NSAS issue during that time for me i really appreciate it i really appreciate it it's very awkward i have never seen it before i was born 1987 this type of thing has never happened in nigeria before someone's time has expired let's say expires and his name is up and you now retain him for another three months again it's not done anywhere honestly it's not done anywhere and i feel i feel bad i'm a nigerian oh. And the president have his own finance, uh, but we don't think uh, it is ne it is necessary to like uh, still in elongate his stay because with the due I mean, with the security uh, situation on ground, we don't think it should be. But what can we say? Whenever we talk, they don't listen to us. President Mohammed Buhari has extended the tenure of Mohammed Adamu as the Inspector General of Police by three months. Mr. Adamo was due to retire from the police, having spent a maximum of 35 years in service. The extension was announced by the Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Diangyadi, who stated that the extension was necessary to give room for the proper selection of a successor. Now, this follows president's, uh, the president's nomination of the ex-service chiefs for Senate approval as non-carrier ambassadors de designate. Um, joining us to have this conversation uh, is a legal practitioner, Emmanuel Umoran, and political analyst, Marcus E. Joma. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay, thank I'm you for having me. Great, thank you. Um, Vice Emmanuel, what are the legal implications of this um, tenure elongation? Does the Nigerian constitution, 1999 constitution, as amended, support this move by Mr. President? Well, uh, the 1999 constitution does not um, discuss the issue of, uh, does not make mention of this issue of extension. It, generally, the appointment and removal of um, an IGP. And, um, there's something, I think the last time we had the conversation that we are not looking at. The president does not act alone in appointment or removal IGP. There's the police council. He must, the word used in the constitution is shall, commend to him. But, and the police council constitutes the president, all the states, the IGP, and the chairman of the police uh, commission. The police council sits. So the problem we have really in Nigeria is the fact that our they do not apply them. And unfortunately, too, our courts, if we approach our courts, the issue of comes up. And 
which is not helping us in determining uh, our uh, determining our constitutional issues. Mm -hmm. 215 and 216 are clear on appointment and removal of the IGP. But unfortunately, um, the presidents we've had, Obasanjo did it and this president has, has constantly done it of extending the tenure of um, the IGP beyond the statute that he's supposed to serve. It is because he is an employee of, of government. And the, the, the police act and the civil service rules make for service to government. If you are uh, in the civil service, including the police, it's 60 years. But if you are um, a lecturer in the university or a justice of a judge of the high court, it's 65 years. If you are a justice of the court of appeal or Supreme Court, it's 70 years. Okay. Or if you are a professor in the university, it's 70 years. So these are clear provisions of our laws. But they're, they're, they're better. What we have seen in Nigeria is that, like the president did the other day, um, uh, uh, signed a, 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 a presidential uh, uh, order that people, if you do not wear nose mask in public, you, 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 you will uh, go to jail. And he was the first person to, to be seen in a, in a group without a nose mask. So that is a problem we have in Nigeria, really. The executive in Nigeria do not obey our laws. They don't care. Mm. Unfortunately, they don't care. And since there is no check by the courts and the National Assembly or the State House of Assembly, we have a continual breach of our rules. Let me go to Marcus on this one. Marcus, the excuse that has been given by the presidency for retaining um, the IGP for an extension of three months um, is so that they could find a valuable or a suitable successor, someone who could fit into his shoes. Should this be our problem? And, and how good enough is this excuse for us? Um, good evening, viewers. Thank you very much, Marion. Um, the truth of the matter is there are so many things that are not legal but moral. I am not a lawyer like my colleague uh, who just spoke on, uh, on the issue. I am not a lawyer, but one thing I know in Nigeria, there are a lot of things that are conventional, ne not necessarily constitutional. And um, the constitution is not big enough to contain all the needs that we have as a people. So there are many things that only time will bring to the fore, like the issue we are discussing currently, for instance, the constitution never envisaged this. So there is no clear cut direction or any rule per se. So it's more or less of a moral issue. Why did he not prepare? It's more or less of a moral issue. It's more or less of a, a leadership failure. Because that's me. But if the constitution is clear, the constitution is a book of rules and regulations that we all must follow. If the constitution is clear on how to deal with issues like this, once your tenure is over, you step down and somebody who is um, you know, up to the task is given. I mean, there are several people who are DIGs. Uh, is, is, is the presidency saying that all of these DIGs are incompetent? Is that what you two are alluding to? I said that, but I've tried to make it clear to you that he hasn't also committed any offense. That's why I say it's a moral issue. So you don't go judging the president on moral grounds because uh, it has to be strictly legal. So really, I think the people that should be more worried about this development are those in the National Assembly, the lawmakers, who who didn't, uh, of course, the Nigerian constitution have always been denied that it's not the constitution of the people, because the opening paragraph say, we the people, and you and I know that there was never a time that you and me, uh, me and myself, Mariam and uh, Umaru sat down to draft any constitution, neither did we send any representative for the drafting of the 99 constitution. So the National Assembly should have noticed all of these loopholes that the president is exploring I hate to criticize the president on moral grounds. He's a human being. He can make mistakes. But if we made it a law, then when he fails, we can... There are many grounds on which to chastise the president. Insecurity, for instance, is more important to me than the extension of the IGP. If the president feels the IG has done very well in his own calculation, in his own uh, uh, assessment, and he wants to keep him for three days longer, for three months longer, that is his business. Uh, we've seen presidents who, who promoted AIGs to DIGs in one night, and the following day they were IGs. We've seen police officers who have benefited from rapid promotion. 
I have close family friends and relations who have been in the force for a very long time and their colleagues are already commissioners of police and they are still assistant commissioners of police. So the issue has to do with the police reform that we've been talking about, you know, the byproduct of the NSAS protests and all of that. The police promotion pattern is faulty in itself. Very faulty. So to start judging an IG by the date of retirement is another matter altogether. When people are not promoted equally, people are promoted on quota system, not on performance. How do you start blaming the president for extending a channel? He has the right to do so. After all, if you check very well, the IG wasn't the most senior DIG at the time he was appointed, if I'm not mistaken. And there are many DIGs like that who probably their colleagues in police college or training schools are still commissioners of police who got politically promoted. So is that the kind of IG you want to appoint? When he knows how this man became a DIG or how he became an IG or AIG as it were. So it's a moral issue until we tackle it from the police reform that we've been clamoring for and making sure that the processes are followed. We don't just wake up and, and do things. If the processes were followed, naturally, the military that we used to know, both the army and the police, if your junior is appointed over you, you resign. But okay. today we have police, uh, police officers and military officers who are more or less politicians who lobby to get the busy tenures and all kinds of people just to retain their offices. They are not professional. Have the police done very well? The answer is no. The IT should have been fired long ago. So what is it? What are they extending the standard for? But again, it's the president's prerogative. And as right. long as it is not a legal matter, I don't want to fault him on that. It's a moral issue. It's just a call for our National Assembly to wake up and look at some of this lacuna in our laws right. and work on the police. All right, quickly, uh, wrapping up now, uh, Barista um, Emmanuel, quickly. Um, do you agree with Marcus and going forward? Because he's talked about regulations and, you know, um, the police reforms and how things have always been done in this country. And, and you know, you also made mention of gov uh, presidents who have also done this. And, you know, um, so again, would we all continue in this manner if we're expecting to have a good country with great service chiefs and good IGPs with great security infrastructure to make sure that we're safe in our countries. Is this the, to the path that we want to tow going forward? It's uh, my friend, uh, Marcos. Uh, you see, I just let me say one little thing. I had, my, I had an encounter with a policeman. My friend had an encounter with a policeman in Miami. And the policeman said to him, it is because we obey the little laws of our countries. That is why you people leave your country and come and settle in our country. Very profound. What my friend is calling issue is the constitutional issue. The president swore to abide by the constitution. He swore an oath to abide by the constitution. So he do not think it is a moral issue. It is not whether he, he, he married a new wife or he um, uh, did something that concerns his, his relationship with his wife or his, his family. This is an issue of governance in Nigeria. And it's the constitutional provision section 215 and 216 are clear in that regard, what to be done. And the police service uh, the police act and the rules of, of engagement of the police. You, when you are entering the police or the police force, you know that you retire at age 60 and or 35 years after engagement in the police. Mm. So these are clear. Oh. Yes, the, the IG can um, the, um, retire. And then they can look for another job for the IG. Okay, gentlemen, unfortunately, this is all the time that we have. Yeah. And we, we, we need to wrap up this conversation. I, I wish that we could go on and on and talk about this. But of course, these conversations will continue to um, be on the lips of a lot of people until the three months has expired. Barista Emmanuel Umoran is, of course, a lawyer. And Marcus uh, is uh, a political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you for being here. Well, let's move on to my take because we're out of time. Now, again, Mr. President shocks us by elongating the service uh, of the IG of police, even though his tenure has, you know, 
elapsed. The presidency has given us a convenient excuse that he has to stay until they find a suitable replacement. And so I ask, what does this even mean? Do we not have suitable DIGs, like I asked my guest? Is it a competence issue? Why did we have to wait for so long knowing that an IGP will have a day that he would retire? So why didn't we go a fishing for his replacement? Does this not make us look bad, like a joke to every other person? I mean, this country. A country that cannot replace the police chief as soon as his tenure expires? Again, monies have been allegedly misappropriated by the NDDC. And right after the collapse of Professor Ponde at the National Assembly, it seems like you know, the curtains had been drawn over this issue. And there's been radio silence from the NDDC. They're not speaking. We tried to invite them on this show. They never showed up. So what happens next? Will this matter be swept under the carpet again because too many big wigs are involved? Oh, don't touch this. All, all, all those who blew hot and cold on social media, where are they? They have gone silent. We sensationalize these issues and never really follow up. Taxpayers' monies are disappearing without a trace. So which way, Nigeria? We can't really continue like this. We can't, not anymore. I'm Mariana Kong, thanking you all for being part of the show. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you.